Going what? for a very quick scout and uh, hatchery, clear hatchery block here is going to force that hatchery. A hatchery block? Yes, yes. Okay, hatchery block is done. So this probe, it must have been like one of the first 12 probes to get across yeah, the yeah. map like that. Because I, I doubt you can actually uh, get it after the pile. Or maybe you got it after the pile. I'm not entirely sure. Anyhow. It's pretty fast. Yeah, certainly. So this probe, its job is just to annoy, to like delay the minerals as much as possible. You see the counter micro by Saral as well, by the way. Attacks with one of the drones, but also keeps putting the drones back on the mineral patches that they were denied from. So some nice counter micro and some good pro micro as well from Stats. As we have a Twilight Council here, now about to finish from Stats. No robo just yet. And the sneaky little lane getting on in and getting a decent yes. scout by the looks of it. Like, Serral's like one of the only players that does this very continuously, just gets a scout with everything. Uh, so he sees the Twilight Council, sees the Robo. So he knows exactly what's up here. And the fact, like, the reason he got in was the Adept was going across the map. So seeing that there's no Adept in the wall either, he knew an Adept was on the way to him. So far, this is really good for Serral because very often the Zerg has to play reactive, trying to find out what the Protoss is doing. He now knows exactly what he's up against. Ooh, moving out with two Adepts as well. So this is Q by stats. Serral has seen it. He had these Lings out on the map, all scattered around, so he got to see where the War Prism left and where it's heading. You see this with the Lings. Even though they cannot kill the War Prism or deal with the Adepts right now, he's just staying close enough just to keep vision of exactly what's going on. It's going to be four DTs with the depth shading in. Does he go for Archons? Yes. Not gonna quite try here to do damage with just Dark Templars. Oh, very nicely spotted actually by stats because you need to start working on this as soon as possible here ideally so that Crypt can disappear before you start that third Nexus. Still very focused on the defense here. He made quite a few units but he needed to, especially on the Roaches, usually you know from 8 to 10 is the right amount against those two Archons to make sure you can negate the damage. Serral is so good with his Queens by the way at shutting down whatever air units are on the side of the map, whether it's stuff like, you know, medivacs, oracles, and in this case, the war prism. He's always doing the moving shots to make sure he does maximum damage to it to chase it away. And this is a spire. Oh, this could be really cute by Serral. So right now he's got enough roaches to deal. Look at this micro with the roaches as well. Splitting the roaches so the Archons don't deal maximum damage. And that overlord at the third base of stats actually delayed that Nexus quite a bit. So I'm definitely liking the situation that Serral's found himself in. And look, bringing out a queen just to help poke the war prism so he can get the, the creep spread rolling. But stats realizes that there's a bit of a weakness here. Both those Archons are very low though. So Serral can definitely breathe a bit. And that's why he's droning up so hard. Mutalisks on the way. How do stats react here from there? Does he get, like, I guess, cannons and shield batteries in every single mirror line? Has to maybe spread out a couple stalkers here and there. But then all of a sudden, Cyril is in a position where he's forcing static defense from his opponents and his economy can just kind of go out of control. That was a really good scout by stats, though. Like, he, even though it was sort of late, the Mutas haven't arrived yet, and he's definitely preparing. Look at these cannons in production. They are going to pretty much finish as soon as the Mutas arrive. And that doesn't mean they're not going to deal damage. In fact, that timing, and then the War Prism comes back as well with the Archons. These Mutas, they want to deal a lot of damage, and maybe they still will. But these cannons, they're finishing up in the right bases all at the right time. Still, though, five probes do fall. And I love how Cyril, as soon as those hallucinated phoenixes flew by the Spire, he immediately threw down the infestation pit, the Bane Nest. He's already thinking about the transition. Look, Stats is overreacting. He's going into double Stargates. It's just going to be the couple of Mutas. And now Cyril has to wonder what's the best units that he can get, that he can get against what Cyril's doing. It's definitely not Ultras, I can tell you that. There's already quite a few Immortals. Simply Broodlords. What's Stats going to make to counter Broodlords? He's going to have to go into Tempest. Like, it would just slow the game even more be able to get more bases, build up his economy in a crazy amount. And I mean, Cyril, look at his guy's income. He's got so much gas already. Like, it's going to be so easy for him to go into Brutalords. <laughs> the two Stargates, what is he going to really produce? Like, he has to get out Tempest really fast. He might be like, Stats, you've got a huge bank. But immediately, three Tempests start up here. And one extra Stargate is not producing anything yet. He can't afford it, certainly. Oh, uh, this is big. Stats is going to get spotted here entirely by those Mutalisks and the Orisha uh, the that actually almost can con contaminate, I believe. Pathogen glands are already on the way. You know what? Game one, I say links don't usually get in, they get in. Game two, I say maybe we're gonna see, or I hope we're gonna see some late game. We're gonna get it! Apparently, whatever we talk about here is happening pretty quickly between these two, and I gotta say, I'm pretty happy that we're gonna be seeing a longer game with a lot of infestors and all that because it's gonna be completely different than anything else that you will see in the matchup usually, you know, in the mid game. And from the get go, we're gonna find out who's better. 
at this kind of game on many bases with a very big economy. And this might set up the pace for the rest of the series. Oh, that's oh, a beautiful wow. storm okay. and a nice force field as well to block that from happening. If Stats loses here, he might have to reconsider even allowing the game getting to this stage for the rest of the series, for example, and vice versa. Wow, he's getting really pumped up here. Both have a sick economy. You see the bank of Serral is super spent here, but he's been using the drones to make a lot of static defense. So how yeah. many spores and spine crawlers does he actually have on the map right now? And kind of interested in that. 14 spines and 15 spores. I'm curious what the double robo is for here. Like once upon a time when you were facing stuff like Swarmost or even initially against Brutalords, you would go for Colossus. But I feel like nowadays, if you're facing the super late game Mass Infester and Brutalords, you would just go for a lot of air, but it starts Disruptor production. Whoa, Disruptors. And Blink DT everything. Rotti would be so happy right now. For a long time, he's been talking about the late game Protoss utilizing Disruptors to deal with the Infestors, the Infested Terrans, just to keep them at bay. Right now, this is kind of like a nice little skirmish. Serral, like, he can kind of afford to give up some of these roaches, actually, within regards to the supply. The Banelings can be remaxed on as well. But this is a very, very fortified base. Like, Stats is doing a darn good job of defending with just the right amount of units. Although, yeah, if you lose... bank is not actually that insane right now, but he can definitely max out here after losing his army. Double Prism on the way. Gravity Drive. How many gateways is uh, Stats on? I 11. So if he actually wants to threaten that main base, you know, with the big Zealot Warpy to try and bring Cell's army out of position while he sieges elsewhere, that's going to be a very big option. I think one thing that's actually caught Serral a bit off guard this game was he was expecting an attack to come way earlier. A lot of Protoss are so scared about the late game that they try and stop it from ever happening. Yeah, even Solar said that Zest played the way he did because he was worried about the late game and Solar did add that he, he didn't think it was that bad, you know. I'm very curious to see, like, that's disrupt your composition in action finally <laughs> oh my gosh this base is uh, it's got changelings shield batteries cannons you name it i'm feeling observed yeah, absolutely trying to deal with those changelings as well each one's an indiv individual click there's just too much else happening right now oh the first disrupt shot Serral avoids it and takes out a disruptor but these tempests oh they are caught by a fungal here todd and he's gonna neuro a oh! ton of these tempests that's what the disruptors were for here to prevent that against all of these Infestors, a lot of them are still all the way back. He's shooting the Protoss units with some of these Tempests that he's got here. The Serral Corruptors are going to come in, get rid of one more single Tempest. I think the trades were way better for Serral here, but he did lose a ton of Infestors, which are very costly in gas. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Like, you have to keep your Infestor count high in this matchup. Both trading pretty decently against one another. The use of the Disruptors, too, if you get lots of your Tempest Neural Parasited, it's kind of nice because the Infestors can't then move, which is then super easy to hit them with the uh, Disruptors. And the Hydras, the Banes will help clean this up, but this is the slowest march of the Spores, and it's going straight across the middle of the map. Stats starting to pick away at these Brutalors, though, just being super calm, super collected. I love using the Disruptors just to be like, hey, man, look, you can't do anything about this. And he's constantly threatening. That is a huge number of oh them, my too. God. Grabbing the mother ship here. Very, very important, slowing that even for just a second. I feel like a few Vipers will be very helpful here. After he landed the fungal, obviously, there's still going to be the Tempest. He needs to worry about stats sacrificing some sentries. I mean, he needs to. They're kind of useless at this stage. And warping in a ton of high Plus Two more warp presents on the way. Still upgrading all over the place. Plus three air armor, plus three shields. Mm, both building up a bank, and this disrupts a shot. Oh, takes out two infestors, so nice little trade for stats over there. Okay. So Neural is like the biggest threat here, almost, I feel like. Like, obviously, fungal infested turn is scary, but Neural is the one thing that <laughs> can make the game here very quickly. He's dodging disruptor shots with spore crawlers. Like, he was just, like, bumbering them and migrating them back, which was really cool. But it's going to be so hard for either one of these players to kill the other one. Both of them have static defense, which makes it really, really difficult. Oh, that is a sick fungal on a lot of disruptors. They're starting to fall here, Todd. Yeah, quite a few infestors died here from one of the shots, though. Infested Terran's going to be spent forward. That prevents the disruptors from sending their purification nova into these infestors. And that middle base is getting siege. I mean, it's almost, it's out of minerals and out of gas, to be honest. It feels a little late, but I guess if he takes that out, then he can prevent even more easily the 6 o'clock uh, base from being taken. And Cyril is somewhat breaking through right now. What's the unit loss that at? So it's kind of close and up, but it stayed pretty darn similar between these two guys. Taking out this base, as you said, it's it's mined out entirely, but it definitely makes that bottom base much harder to take. And it, it feels like if Cyril 
can keep on strangling his opponent, he can start winning the War of Attrition, even if he trades a little bit ineffectively against his opponent. And you know what? Serral just killed a lot of probes here, which I think stats with the bank that he has, he can replace that and try to build the perfect army. Here's the thing, though. What's the perfect army? I think adding more carriers might be good here. Mm, and that's exactly what he's going for. Oh, that storm. Oh, my gosh. Using the feedback and the storms against him. That was awesome by Serral. And now neuraling everything, completely negating any damage from these Archons, attacking them with the Hydralisk all the way up there. Stats, he's taking an important base at the top. That's going to be denied. Cyril is going to force Stats to spend his entire bank and say, well, I still got a bank, you don't. Stats still trying to assemble the perfect army here. He's producing out of his targets. Actually, he's not quite maxing out just yet. Maybe he's waiting to decide. Stepping on creep here a little bit, gonna send us purification over forward. He lost, he lost the observer here that was forward. Mm, kind of big. I, I like the fact that Stats has just said, you know what, I'm gonna establish this bottom base, but that does leave the top base open, which I think Serral is absolutely realized here. Does have a nice army over there, but these Tempests getting some nice shots. Warpins now because he's freed up the probe supply, are available at the top. He deflects both sides. And again, these Tempests are getting really healthy shots. J just this number of five is enough to one shot these Broodlords. A lot of Broodlords have fallen this game. Yeah, actually, there was quite a few of them here that died at the bottom and where Cyril wasn't paying attention for just a second. The two Mutas still holding strong. This is just crazy, Todd. Like, yeah. the, the patience of both of these guys to get to this kind of situation. Sass has definitely gone for like a slightly irregular unit mix. These disruptors, by the way, definitely do good damage yeah. to those investors. Shut is infested. Terrence up. As more of them are going to spam. Time Warp gets in the center of everything here. Neural Parasite being used as well. Disruptors kind of clumped in the corner here. Tons of Infested Terran are going to land. Fungal on top of a lot of these carriers. Serhal, Serhal has waited enough. He's going for it. Oh, but he's losing so much supply here, Todd. I think he's got a lot of supply in production, actually. Stats. All the shield batteries are drained, but those disruptors at the back are starting to get their uh, cooldowns back. The carries are falling one by one, though. There is so many infested Terrans right now. The Corruptors, they're pushing stats into the corner. Warpins, are they going to be enough to save him? Nice, a big flank with the Zealots as well. They do keep the infestors back. The Brulors, though, they're going to be, deal be able to deal with these, and Stash just spent so much of his bank just holding on. And keep in mind, that was a fight where there were so many shield batteries here helping out for stats. Sail didn't care. He finally had enough waiting in this game. He's taking the base at the top as well. Why not? Making himself at home on Stats' side of the map. And he really broke through here. Now, Stats having a bunch of Zealots and Stalkers, that's just not going to be a deal against this army of Serral. No, certainly not. Back up to 27 investors again, by the way, is Serral, which is super cool. He's got so many more bases than Stats mining efficiently at this point in time as well. Obviously, his gas bank is similar with uh, Stats, but he can afford to make a lot of extra links. Look at this huge warping from Stats as well, by the way. I think that's going to be able to take out this base pretty easily. Yeah, but that means he's still spending a lot of Zealots that are not going to be useful other for, than for taking out this base. And if you look at Stats' bank, like... If he keeps on losing units here, and he will, oh. he doesn't have that much uh, economy left on his side of the map on the bases that he has left. Those two mutas, they were pretty cost-effective, uh, I'd say. Yeah, like the amount of war prisons they've dealt with, and now he has to warp in some stalkers up there to deal with them or something that he doesn't really want to be making. Stas is definitely holding on very well. But the thing is, it feels like Serral is starting to get a grasp of this game. And this is, oh my gosh, this fungal. This could be it, boys. These Broodlaws, they're going ham on the ground units. The Disruptors are keeping the Infestors at bay, which is really, really nice use. Even Void Rays in the mix to deal with the Corruptors. Yeah, I think that's really smart, but Serral just disengages for the time being, still looking to try and land some fungal. A lot of these Disruptors and expensive units of stats are dying. Serral's pressing forward. Stats spent his entire bank. And Serral is showing him why it's a bad idea to go to a late game against him. Still pretty much maxed out with a massive bank behind this. And I can guarantee Stats has never played against a Zerg that has played this good, this patient late game ZVP before. And it is really biting him. 193 supply for Serral against the 140 of Stats. Serral beat him in the early game in three minutes. He also takes him all the way to the late game. He wasn't truly prepared for it, but here, lots of storms landing. The mothership comes in. There's carriers, there's Tempest. Is this the box art or the box of StarCraft 2? I don't know what I'm seeing here. <laughs> That's somewhat fighting back, actually. He made a bunch of carriers, but I think Serral is about to overwhelm. GG gets caught. And Serral 